Polly Vidis was born in 1876 and grew up in central London with her parents, Arthur and Mary, and younger twin sisters, Catherine and Emmeline. She was given her first camera in 1900 by her cousin Caroline Murray, who became her first portrait, and in her own words, turned my fate, as she started a five-decade career as one of the most important and pioneering British-born photographers of the first half of the 20th century. In 1905, she moved with her sisters and mother to Sheringham and opened a studio on Church Street, designed by her uncle Sir Robert Edis, with a glass roof to allow plenty of natural light. Then to South Street in Sheringham and a new studio built onto the side of their house. By 1918, Olive had become one of the leading figures of British photography. She'd been accepted as a member of the British Photographic Society, indeed was a fellow, one of the first women ever to become so. Her subjects included prime ministers like David Lloyd George and a young Prince Philip of Greece. In that same year, 1918, she was approached by the Imperial War Museum to undertake a tour of the Western Front as Britain's first official female war photographer, documenting the work of women's services in France and Belgium. The trip was delayed due to the precarious military situation and some opposition to sending a woman to photograph an active war zone. But in 1919, Olive became only one of five British photographers ever commissioned to cover the First World War. Alastair Murphy of the Cromer Museum has curated this exhibition. He can explain more about the month-long journey that took in over 1,000 miles. So Alastair, as I understand it, we've got just a small selection of the photographs that Olive took? We, ha we have. They, these are photographs that were commissioned by the Imperial War Museum uh, in 1919, Olive, uh, with Florence Norman, who's over there, drove around Europe, did about a thousand miles in a in an old car. And while she was here, she was she took photographs of women serving in the forces. And what we have, very characteristically of Olive, we have a series of photographs that talk about the people. So. All of these photographs tell her individual stories and to even make them more wonderful, we have a, a journal that Olive kept while she was on the journey and she writes very movingly and also amusingly about the things that she witnesses and experiences over those four weeks. Mm. I understand the story behind this photograph of the tank is really quite interesting, do tell me. When this uh, collection of Olive's work uh, arrived at Cromer Museum. There were a number of glass plate negatives in, in a box that were almost like plain glass. It didn't look as if there was an image on them at all. But using modern technology, I was able to reveal this image, which is a photograph of a wrecked tank on the Menin Road. And it's kind of one of the moments of my museum career, because as this picture emerged on the computer screen, I realized that I was almost certainly the first person to see this image uh, mm. in a hundred years. Extraordinary. Well, a wonderful way to finish this, uh, this short feature on Olive Edis. It's a wonderful exhibition, Alistair. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for allowing us in this afternoon. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. The exhibition here at the Castle Museum continues through to January 2017 and I can thoroughly recommend a visit. We've only been able to show you a small number of the photographs that are on display, about 190 are here and that's only 10% of what Cromer Museum holds of the famous and not so famous subjects. This is an exhibition that appeals on many levels, historically, socially and emotionally and also provides us with visual documentation of the huge contribution that Olive Edis made to the history of British photography. <laughs>